Hello there, YouTube. This ain't going to show up here. This is the Nano Conversion Kit Lathe to Mill and Drill. That is their part number at the Little Machine Shop. This is going to be greasy. I already peeked in this box. The stuff comes with protective grease. So don't scream when you see it. I scream when I've seen all the oil on the uh, lathe down on the board. But that's all protective. We will be cleaning it off. We got some spray protectant. Here's your little table. The nuts for it. Maybe we'll go have to go to Telemacro. Maybe we'll stay back here. Okay. Let's take out this. It's going to get greasy, so we already decided just don't cover the desk. I will try to go on Telemacro and show you the instructions of how this goes. But this would be your bottom. This would be when you want to lift something up. Now we're going to spray this because on the lathe, you have what I call, what what I've learned is called the Gibbs screws. On all your cross slides and everything, you have little screws to adjust the plate. They are tightened up, so it's very, it was hard to move. I didn't want to break anything. They have to be loose and adjusted just to let it go play. Uh, like with this, I haven't, the manual did not come with very good instructions. Uh, it actually showed how to put the whole thing together from start to finish on the lathe. All the motor and all that stuff, which was already together, but it was kind of limited. This is your little table for your drill. There's a set screw on here. You can take your arbor out of your tail stock. This will just set over the other part of the tail stock. And there is a little screw in here somewhere. I looked at this last night. This is only about three inches. I should have grabbed my ruler. This is only about three inches diameter. It's not very big. Here is your base. I'm going to take that out of the package. Here's the base when you want to convert it to a mill or drill. Okay, This will probably be mounted to my desk. Uh, off to the side where it's not in my way. Like off over here. I usually work here. Instead of putting it on the board. That way I can mount it a lot more solid. I can get underneath the top of my desk when I drill through it. And of course have these screws easy to get to. Probably like this. Or when you take everything laying down, you stand up and shove it in here. Okay, so it'll probably be mounted to the desk. Okay, here's my assorted screws and whatever else. Of course, the screws don't open that bag yet. And this is the chuck. Okay, when you remove the chuck from the lathe, this screws on. Okay, and the one for the tailstock has the arbor piece that goes in there. So I have two different chucks. Uh, it was kind of confusing when I looked all this stuff up. I'm glad I looked real close because I got the kit for the tailstock that comes with the bits and the center drills and it says fits the tailstock and the headstock. But I knew it had the arbor because I had looked in there. So I have two of these. I would recommend doing that. Uh, just keep rooting through there or call them. They'll, I'm sure they'll tell you that. I didn't call them because I did find it. So this will replace your three jaw chuck when you stand it up to make a drill or mill. But as far as drilling from the tailstock, that has an arbor that goes with it. I do not know if they interchange on this piece or not, which would be nice if it did. So that's about it for that. Uh, we'll pause here. Once we have this cleaned up and everything, and all this, we will show you the uh, pictures on the instructions. Uh, I may have to go to Telemacro so you get an idea what it looks like. How you have to take it apart to convert it. But we're going to get busy and clean this stuff up. Already pretty messy here. Okay. We'll start out with this. we got it cleaned up. I had to loosen this nut a little bit. I took this screw all the way out. This locks the screw. This is so this can turn 15 degrees either way. Like this. This is where your slide stuff. 
I'm still doing all the technical terms, cross light and everything. This is where all your stuff goes on top, and then your table goes on it, where your lathe bit would go. I will show that in the, I'm just going to show the pictures. But I wanted to show this. Loosen this nut up. Okay. Loosen this up a little bit. I took this nut and loosened it up, loosened up. I sprayed everything. This was really stiff to turn until I sprayed it. Because that oil that comes on it, I believe it to be like protective grease. It is really gummy. It is nasty stuff. I'm going to show what I'm going to use. I looked at... Uh, Lucas has like a toolbox buddy product or whatever. It was $10 big giant can. It didn't have what this had. Uh, Royal Purple, $12 for a miniature can. It has a silicone. I don't have any stock in the company. This stuff, it probably won't show up on Telemacro. I'll just read it. Uh, moving parts such as window tracks, all hinges, valves, wheels, roller chains, glides, and gears. Prevents rust and corrosion on items such as car parts, fishing reels, tackle, all tools, fire, firearms, sports equipment, all marine applications. Penetrates the free rust, duct tools, repels moisture. Uh, like put on your spark plug boots, power tools, electric motors, great for rust proofing tools, fishing gear, and other metals prone to corrosion. This stuff is really slippery. I sprayed this on my fingers in the parts store, and it would not come off with soap and water. My hands are so slippery with this, it would not come off with soap and water. I had to use my orange citrus hand cleaner to actually get it out of my skin. So it is very slippery. All these surfaces on this stuff is really slippery. That's why I used it, because I drenched this. I had so much down in here that it run out down here, okay? I drenched this whole thing with it, and I watched that brown oil come out. This stuff is kind of clear. It's actually almost colorless. The other way. Now, I don't know if this will show up on Telemacro, of how you tear your lathe apart to put this on. Up here where all your slide and everything is, that's what this piece is. So we'll show it here. You take it off there. You mount this part like this, because it's going to be turned this way. You mount this to this part. That will go on this bar when you stand this up vertically. Because your motor and everything is going to end up being on top like a drill press. Then if you see, this mechanism will go to here. Right there. See if I can get that to show up a little better. Maybe if I stay back. Everybody has big computer screens now. This little table replaces where you would have your bit. And I think they call that a lantern type bit holder. That's where this comes in. Okay. So you can see where it has the T nut. Okay. So it will slide in here. Of course, like I said, this is the part I'll probably mount to the bench. Instead of the board, off to my way. If it's my way, I can unbolt it when I want to use it. Because if I'm going to make projects. I'm going to try to do all my stuff and do my milling on something else. I don't want I don't want one day to rip the lathe down. So I'll probably make a lathe projects and then do this. Here's your completed look if it shows up. I'll take some still shots of this. I don't think the company will mind. Of course here's where you move your lathe chuck, three draw chuck. Here's where we'll put your drill chuck on. Here's your completed thing. And I'll snap a couple of pictures at the end. That's how you convert it over to your mill. If you're going to do the drill, you would just have your tail stock, which that's on the other piece of paper. Might as well show it, but I'll show that when I probably someday when I use the drill. But we'll show that real quick. If you're going to convert to right here. See where your tail stock is? This just sets on there. There's no threads on this table. It sets on there with a set screw. Okay. There's no threads on there. 
And if you're going to use your drill chuck on the lathe, it does have an arbor for it. The arbor does come out. If you look at your arbor on your tailstock, you take this out and there's one that comes on your drill chuck. You want to center drill a piece. You have to unscrew this and pull this out. I don't know if there's a spring in there or not, but I'll be real careful. You just unscrew it, pull this out, slide the other one in there. So it does take a little bit to change over to do a center drill. So if you're going to make a whole bunch of pieces and you have round stock, you can go ahead and center drill them, is what I would do, then put the lathe back which I, if I remember right, those are 60 degree angle on those arbors. If anybody out there watches this knows more than me, I'm open to any helpful suggestions. Here's how this drill works. You'll lift up on the lever. You will be drilling. The drill bit don't come down. You'll be bringing the table up to it. I just thought I'd include that. But I will put some pictures at the end of this because this is about the milling attachment. But I'm satisfied now. This did not want to turn very well. So there is a spring under here. If I'm looking right, I loosen this nut up. Don't know what the size is. Loosened up this, which was 8 millimeter. Loosen this up. This locks it. And you also have this. If you're going to raise and lower this, I'd recommend loosening this a little bit because it goes in here. That keeps it from doing this. See, this will move. Once you tighten that up, you wouldn't want to tighten it all the way because when you're going to be milling something, you will be raising this a little bit at a time. But keep it tight enough where this don't wobble. This isn't a high dollar, high dollar machine, but there's not much wobble in there. If I tighten that screw up just a little more, it's like the wobble is gone, it will still work. It may be a little tight. It's hard to see the lines on here. Right there, I will be painting that with white paint, model paint or something. There's your center mark. That is very hard to see. These will all be painted, either on either one on the lathe part. Anything that has that on the black, I will paint with a little white mark. Or a silver Sharpie. Something to make that so you can see it without having to squint at it. But, that's basically how that part works. You're milling something down, you'll raise it up to what height you want. Like say you want to take something off so much at a time, you'll just raise a little bit at a time. You may maybe a little bit to get down there and look at that, but it won't be that bad. It won't be that complicated. But this covers the milling attachment. Now we'll take some pictures so you can see in better detail of how that actually goes on there. So thanks for watching.